Hey, everyone. So today we've got the wonderful David Oates talking about reverse speech. Some of you know what it is because I've already told a few people and then other people will be real new to it. Um, for people that are listening, I'll get you to mute just because we will have recordings playing and lots of cool stuff to listen to. So um, I'll hand it over to you, David. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming to my presentation. Um, in this hour or so, probably about an hour, I'm going to cover the basics of reverse speech, uh, give you a very brief overview of my 40 years of research. And uh, uh, yes, I have been doing this for 40 years, 40 years this year, actually. We celebrated the 40th anniversary of reverse speech, and uh, it's been a passion of mine. And uh, I hope, uh, hope as this presentation continues, you will see why it's such a passion of mine. Uh, I believe reverse speech to be an incredible discovery, a direct voice into the unconscious and that deeper region inside of ourselves. So let me. Uh, let me just uh, move to my basic theory here. And uh, my uh, the basic theory I'm proposing is that if human speech and recorded is recorded and played backwards, extra intelligible messages can be heard amongst the gibberish. So quite literally what I'm doing is I'm recording speech and running it backwards. Now, I started... I started doing this uh, 40 years ago as a uh, as a young man. I was running a half a house for street kids in Australia. And I heard uh, one of the kids gave me a sermon from a fundamentalist preacher who claimed that if you played rock and roll records backwards, you could hear these evil messages. And uh, I was rather amused by the whole thing. And I went home and got recordings and started playing recordings backwards. And this is how my whole research research started. So let me uh, so let me give you a, a little uh, a brief example of this to get started. This is an example of American politician resigning from the Senate. Uh, listen to his voice. Uh, does he sound sincere to you as he's resigning? Uh, see if you can tell. You do not lay claim to the office you hold. It lays claim to you. Your obligation is to bring to it the gifts you can of labor and honesty, and then to depart with grace. Okay, can you all hear that audio? Okay, is that coming across fine? Yes, I guess it is. Okay. All right. So now I've isolated a small section of this track. And I'm going to play backwards at three separate speeds. So normal speed, 15% slower than 30% slower. So listen carefully. I'm playing this backwards. Tell me what you can hear as I play this clip in reverse. And oops, here, here we go. It's an honor. It's an honor. It's an honor. And did an honor. do you hear it's an honor? Um, uh, did the reversal match your intuition concerning this man's integrity? The reason why I ask you that is that we all hear the reversals of each other on an unconscious level. It's part of what human intuition is all about. When we're talking to someone, we get a, a sense that there's more to what they're saying or, or, or we can sometimes hear behind their words. Well, we literally are many times hearing the reverse speech. So here's this clip again. I'll play it forwards and then backwards at three speeds. So here it is, forwards. You do not lay claim to the office you hold. It lays claim to you. Your obligation is to bring to it the gifts you can of labor and honesty, and then to depart with grace. And here it is in reverse. It's an honor. It's an honor. It's an honor. Okay, so that is what we call a congruent reversal. He is meaning what he's saying. He's genuine in his presentation. Okay, let's play. You not like oh, let's play another example. Um, this other example uh, demonstrates quite clearly what I call the principle of speech complementarity, and by that I mean the forwards and the reverse relate to each other. It was one of the things that convinced me um, about the reality of this phenomenon back in the way back in the early days when I first started was there was this direct contextual relationship. The forwards and reverse subject matter would nearly always relate to each other. 
So here's another politician. This demonstrates how the fourth and the reverse relate. So listen to what he's, uh, listen to what he's saying forwards. It's an amazingly badly written bill. It's an amazingly badly written bill. It's an amazingly badly written bill. And here it is backwards. What's he saying in the verse? Listen carefully. The real bad meal. The real bad meal. The real bad meal. And if, real you, bad. and if you heard the real bad bill, you heard correct. So this is a congruent reversal. Forwards, he says, it's an amazingly badly written bill. And backwards, the real bad bill. So it's the same subject matter, and it's communicating the same topic. So once again, we call this a congruent reversal. So here it is, forwards, and then played backwards. It's an amazingly badly written bill. The real bad bill. The real bad bill. The real bad bill. Yeah. So congruent it's reversal. It's an amazing. Oh. All right. So this is uh, next example. I'm going to play you his. Uh, an Australian Aboriginal on TV, part of the lost generation, I think. I've got stolen generation. Gee, maybe they, gee whiz, I'm not a very good Australian. I can't remember what they call it now. Anyway, he's talking about how at age 35 he found his family after looking for many years. So here's the forwards. And I was about 30, 35, and I found out that my father was alive. How did you find out? Um, it was just through word of mouth, talking to different ones. Same with, uh, but I mean, what, what someone was said to you, something was said to you, was it? Yeah, I just talked to different ones about it because I was sort of trying to trace a sister, one of my sisters. So you found out that you had sisters and brothers, yeah, I, was, I knew all along I, I had one sister. So he's talking about his family, how he found his family at age 35, uh, how he found a, a, a sister, and I was about... a, a sister he didn't know he had. So here is a small section of the track backwards. Once again, what do you hear? I'll play it at three speeds. I am an older sister. I am an older sister. I am an older sister. And if you heard, I have an older have... sister. You heard it correctly. Here it is again. I am an older sister. I am an older sister. I am an older sister. And once again, it's a congruent example. The forward and reverse related to each other. I call this the principle of speech complementarity. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play the whole track backwards, okay? And you want to hear how that reversal just jumps out of the gibberish. And this is literally how, this is literally how it works. You're running speech backwards, and suddenly right amongst the gibberish, this very clear example will appear. And, you know, one of the things I'm puzzled about, and I always ask myself this, is I don't know why no one else didn't discover this before I did, because it's everywhere. It's all through speech. You take any section of speech and run it in reverse about once every 10 or 15 seconds, these really clear phrases pop in amongst the gibberish. Hey, listen, listen to how this sounds. <laughs> I am an older sister. So you heard the gibberish, okay, and then the reversal jumps in amongst the gibberish and back to gibberish once again. Here, I'll, I'll do it one more time. I am an older sister. Oh, and there it is, just right amongst the gibberish. Okay, backward messages like these, as I just said, are occurring once every ten or are occurring once every ten or fifteen seconds of normal, casual, relaxed. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, let's move on to. Okay, backward messages like these occur once every 10 or 20 seconds. Uh-oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, I please apologize for that phone call. Claims for interruption. Now, where was I? Okay, backward messages like these occur once every 10 or 20 seconds of normal, casual, relaxed conversation. I propose that it is another, it is a natural part of language. It is a previously undiscovered, it is another previously undiscovered human sense. 
Language is bi-level, forwards as well as backwards. As the human brain is constructing the sounds of speech, it's putting those sounds together in such a way that we're saying two things. One is forwards from the conscious mind and the other is in reverse from the unconscious mind. I call this phenomenon reverse speech. And as I just said, then I see I'm 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 preempting my slides here. Uh, my series states language is by level forwards as well as backwards. It, it 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 as the brain is putting those speech sounds together, it's doing it. So we say two messages: one forwards and one backwards. Okay. Uh, in my forty years of research, uh, what I have discovered is that there are multiple parts of the mind speaking at once. Uh, for, for approximately 10 or 15% of all backward messages or speech reversals, as I call them, are conscious thoughts. That is, thoughts we are aware of having at the time of speaking. Like as we are talking, we're thinking. When we're thinking about what we're saying, we're thinking about the person we're talking to. We might be thinking about the roast we've got in the oven. But all of those conscious thoughts have the potential to appear in reverse speech. And then we have subconscious thoughts. Now, I differentiate between the subconscious and the unconscious mind. Uh, there's reasons for that, which I'll get into a much deeper when we do our training. Um, but the subconscious mind um, are, th are forgotten memories, uh, warnings of physical disease, uh, body functions, um, um, some emotional states are communicating in subconscious thoughts. Then we have what I call the unconscious mind, which is where I distinguish between the subconscious and the unconscious. The unconscious is where personality and behavior is formed. And reverse speech is at its deepest levels, and I'm going to get into this side of reverse speech, gets into how the unconscious mind is formed, how it's structured how it functions. It's through a complex matrix of metaphors and archetypes. And uh, a lot of my work is all about studying the unconscious archetypes. Uh, it comes into what's called the collective unconscious mind, which uh, is not talked about a great deal. It was uh, one of the theories postulated by Carl Jung, great uh, psychologist, that there is a universal mind uh, that exists outside of time and space. And, uh, at times, reverse speech seems to come to this, come from this collective universal mind. I think I've got a couple of examples in this presentation I'm going to play. And at the deepest levels, the voice of the spirit can be heard. Uh, that is the spirit talking to us, giving advice, giving us guidance. Uh, it is constantly there, constantly speaking to the conscious mind. Okay. It is, in fact, the voice of the heart. Um, and it is our real self, the the heart, the heart of us speaking. That is the real truth of reverse speech. All right. So I'm going to play some examples of reversals coming from different areas of the mind. Here are three examples of reversals from the conscious mind. In other words, thought that the speaker had at the time of speaking. All right, here's a funny one. This is this is Joe Biden. I want you to I choose this example for two reasons. One, it's funny, and B, he's got pauses and stutters and stammers. Okay, so as I watch this, listen to his stutters and stammers in his speech. There's been no indication that's the case at all with regard to, um, uh, you know. Uh, uh, the, the, there, there's a total of a uh, um, uh, okay, stuttering and stammering. And backwards, no backwards, he says, Oops, sorry, I lost. backwards, he says, Have I lost it? Have I lost it? Have I lost it? Have I lost it? And a lot of people would wonder that very same question about Joe Biden. Here's one of Joe Biden's, it's not quite so funny that there raises a few little alarm bells. Here it is, forwards. One of the great gifts of the spirit of independence, and think about this, one of the great gifts is our capacity to see ourselves whole and see ourselves honestly. Now, listen, if, you, if you've got a good look on the video here, if it's not 
broken up with the internet. Watch his lips. And watch his lips mouth out the phrase, you're not safe, Armageddon. Did you see his lips mouth out the reversal? Quite amazing. Quite amazing. That happened about a year ago. And, of course, that reversal... Of course, you know, looking at some of the political strife in the world, it's uh, there could even be uh, there could even be uh, some truth of that. Here's a here's a more controversial example from Prince Andrew, and you you'll see the backward lift movers on this example quite well. Um, here he's talking about his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. I don't know whether you know the story. Uh, well-known uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Um, uh, oh, gee, well, how would you describe him? Sex trafficker. Uh, he he died in his cell allegedly of suicide, but he was rumoured to have arranged sexual liaisons with famous people, including Prince Andrew. And here he here's Prince Andrew being questioned about this, and he's particularly being questioned about a about a photograph of him with a young girl. And here he's talking about that photograph. Nobody can prove uh, whether or not um, that it, that photograph has been doctored, but I don't recollect that photograph ever being taken. And backwards, he says, Jeff, which is Jeffrey Epstein, Jeff had to get murdered. And what you are hearing is a confession to the murder of Jeffrey Epstein. Whether he knew about it or ordered it, reversal doesn't say, but certainly he knew about it. So here it is. Jeff had to get murdered, and see, so he's, he's, I hope the lips sync with the video. Sometimes the uh, the video and the uh, um, the audio get get a little bit out of uh, out of whack. But let's have a look. Jeff had to get murdered. Jeff had to get murdered. Jeff had to get murdered. Can you hear that there? And you can hear the ominous tone. Nobody in, can prove. Hear the ominous tone in his speech. Let's play that one more time. See if you can see those lips. Okay, well, I'm, it's sinking here. I hope it's sinking, sinking your end too. Okay, so there are some conscious thoughts, okay? Reversals can also come from the subconscious mind. They can reveal causes for disease, instructions for cure, as well as forgotten hidden memories. Here is a client who was wanting to solve money problems. So here's the uh, here's the here's the audio. She and I need to work this issue out, but I, it started to bring up all my money fears and stuff. And the thing is, is I if I know I start sourcing fear again, I'm gonna go yeah, no, way you downhill. Don't want to do that. Okay, so she talked about money issues, okay? But backwards, the reversal says, work on my grief. Work on my grief. Work on my grief. Work on my grief. Now, that's her subconscious mind giving me, as the therapist, an instruction on the therapeutic direction that we must take. In order to solve this woman's money problems, we must first isolate grief issues and work on that. Um, th that will occur in any recording I make with a client in my practice. Um, oh, I, sh I should state I have a very busy therapeutic pra practice. I've been in, uh, I've been uh, in reverse speech practice now for thirty-five years. Um, I uh, have uh, so yes. Yeah, so anyway, I've, I've been doing this for thirty-five years in clinic in clinic clinical practice and uh, doing reverse speech for forty years. And there, in every recording I will do. There will be some instructions for what we need to do to work on this client's issue, which I work on using hypnosis, but we'll get onto that as, let, as this lecture continues. Okay. All right. So here's another one. This is a woman who had asthma, and uh, she's talking to me about her asthma. And at one stage, she talks about unusual mold smells in the house. So here's the forwards. He's left it in there. I have to stuff towels under the. Um, door to keep the mold smells from coming out. And backwards she says, under the floor, pus in my head. And again. Now she had no idea what this reversal meant. 
But the husband, out of curiosity's sake, went and looked under the floorboards of the house and found 18 inches of mould growing under the entire house. So consciously she did not know that, but her subconscious mind knew, and the subconscious was able to give a was able to give a reason for the cause for asthma, which was mold smells coming into the house through uh, a bunch of mold growing under the floorboards, and so that is the unconscious mind speaking. Here's another example of um, a chap who came to me for temper issues, and in this one section he talks about uh, his father build that up but it's double tough because i'm traveling abroad i've chosen to live outside america anyway yep. um i'm still relying on him to help me and, build that up oops, but it's double sorry. tough because i'm tra- sorry, i messed that up and back was he says a crime with our father Do you notice, by the way, as I've been playing these examples, how clear they all are? You're not having to stretch your ears to hear them. They're quite plain, they're quite apparent, and they're quite obvious. And um, and that's how they appear amongst sea gibberish. They're very, very clear and definite phrases. And this, this uh, example directly pinpoints to his father as being the cause of his temper. Now, here's a, here's a little bit more of a controversial example. This is a woman who's talking about abusive relationship that she's in. And I was right. just really surprised where that came from and that I even allowed him to even get back into my head like that. I was I was shocked. Um, so she says, I'm really surprised I allowed him to get back into my head. But back what she says, make him abuse me. Make him abuse me. Make him abuse me. So at and some I'm level, really surprised where that came it, from. Sorry. That I so at some level, she was kicking off this pattern, and I find that with many of my clients I'm working with, at some level, some of us, not all people, but some people are actually creating their unconscious patterns, and in this case, creating the situations. So, uh, uh, reverse it gets into pretty controversial, uh, controversial topics. Okay, so um, um, so um, I, I generally, with my clients, I generally record for 30 minutes in, in the initial session. And one 30-minute session, it can reveal precise reasons for behavioural problems. As you saw with a woman with money issues, it was grief that was causing that. Uh, it can, you know, look, it, it'll vary from person to person what the reason is. It can come from childhood. It can come from peer groups. It can come from trauma. Some of it can be inherited uh, genetically. And reverse speech will get into all the various reasons as to why we have these issues. Uh, then it can suggest ways to work with the issues. Um, and the, the most exciting thing about this is that it takes the onus away from us as the therapist as having to diagnose and give solutions because the client's own reversals give the reasons for the problems and the client's own reversals give the solutions for the problems, which is just 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 so exciting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed by it. Uh, reveal hidden memories, very, very common. Um uh, memories forgotten to the uh, to the person. There's um, a client I recently worked with who uh, who had um, just very scattered memories of a very traumatic series of events in her childhood, and uh, we went back and, and, and talked about it all. And the verbals came back and verified these events had indeed happened, and gave us more details, more information in, into the events themselves. So. Uh, um, it can predict future outcomes. Uh, we'll get into some examples of that. And that's where we're tapping into the deep unconscious mind. And obviously provide a feedback for how effective the therapy is because you can monitor the client's unconscious mind just like a doctor would monitor an X-ray of the physical body and, and monitor the changes taking place inside. All right, the big advantage. See, look, I'm getting ahead of myself again. <laughs> it is not the analyst diagnosing the problem or working out how to fix it. It is the therapist. It's the cl- not the therapist. It's the client's own reversals that give the solution. Reversals says it all. 
Okay, here's the reversal showing a predict a predicting a future outcome for a salesman. So here here he is forwards. And developing relationships with, with customers and prospects is, is not uncomfortable for me, but uh, And he says there'll be an awful fuck up. 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 So predicting a future event and yes, quite as if on cue, two weeks later, he messed up his client's order. I think he got almost got fired, but not quite. I, I just can't remember the outcome, but I know he messed up the client's order really, really badly. So, uh, and developing with- so, all right, here's an example. Reverse speech gives a solution to a client's problem who's suffering from depression. And uh, she's talking about getting her life back together again. I started doing something about my life, about the situations that I found myself in. And back I started doing Oops. something about... Sorry about that. And back was, she says, need more sunlight. Need more sunlight. Need more sunlight. Need more sunlight. Just a simple thing like that, hey? Good. And so what this lady did was she cut down all the trees around her house and took down a curtain, let sun into her house, and within a couple of weeks, her whole dis- disposition had changed. All right, let's get into the deep stuff. Metaphors and archetypes. At the deepest levels of reverse speech, when it's talking about behavior and personality, reverse speech will speak in metaphor, using words like wolf, goddess, Lancelot, Garden of Eden. I've documented more than a thousand metaphors in reverse speech so far, which are all compiled into a reverse speech metaphor dictionary. That is available on Amazon, along with all 18 of my books. I'm a prolific author. Um, anyway, so let's play you a uh, let's play you a very typical metaphor. So uh, this is uh, me actually. This is me, my reversal actually picking out my client's problem, which does happen. Sometimes uh, you get uh, solutions into your own reversals in a in a session with a client in, into their issue. So so here's the forwards. You uh, strike me as a very enthusiastic guy. I mean, certainly the time we've been together and you've got all full of ideas. Um, is this latest? Is this just a latest idea? Is it just all throth and barble, or do you really want to get out? And do you really I really want to get out. And backwards, see the wolf fallen in the lake. You uh, strike me as a Oops. very enthusiastic guy. I'm Sorry about that. And the white. Okay, we'll try it again. See the wolf falling in the lake. Yeah. And do you really I really want, want to get so you can imagine me as a young researcher 40 years ago starting to do reverse speech and I hear reversals like this and I go, what on earth does that mean? See the wolf fall in the lake or my goddess is stabbed with a spear. It has taken me or my whole career, 40 years, well, 30 years, really, I, I was pretty well comfortable with them, to work out what these metaphors mean. And I worked them all out through the principle of complementarity. That is, the forwards and the reverse relate to each other. And what I have discovered is that as clients are talking forwards about drive and motivation, they're talking about wolf backwards. The wolf is the metaphor for drive and motivation. As they talk about emotions forwards, and they use the word lake or water or river, but water is a metaphor of emotions. So when my client says, when I'm saying to my client, see the wolf fall in the lake, in this client's unconscious mind somewhere, there is a wolf drowning in, a, in the lake. Now, this guy had just had a nervous nervous breakdown, and he was quite literally drowning in a sea of his own emotions. So the metaphor actually describes the behavior. Uh, now, how we change that behavior... Um, oh, I... Oops, oops, sorry. Ever. Sorry about that. No, no, lost it. <laughs> sorry. Let's, let's go back. Let's go back. And we'll go back. No, one more. Okay, so how we change behavior uh, is uh, also taking me, took me about 20 years to develop my process that I call metaphoric structuring. And the theory is at the base level of consciousness, the human mind is thinking in pictures or metaphor. The metaphor describes the behavior. 
to change the behavior, you change the metaphor. So what I will do, I will have a client see a wolf drowning in the lake and literally in a hypnotic trance, uh, my own style, I'll get onto that. I won't have time today, but we'll get onto that that when I get into my weekend training. And we literally take the wolf out of the lake. And as we change the picture, we are changing the behavior. Um, and I'll get into a whole lot of that as time goes on. So I, I've developed a, a, a very precise hypnotic technique for working with the metaphors and archetypes of the unconscious. All right, here's another reversal, speaking in metaphor. I like to not think that everyone's happy and, you know, yeah. loving life. Yeah, right, okay. Um, and uh, he I says like he'd like to think, think everyone's everyone... happy and loving life, and back was no better gift than this dollar. Here we go. No better gift than this dollar. No better gift than this dollar. Dollar, dollar is an energy or essence, in also an emotional metaphor. So when he's saying, I like everyone to be happy, and let's listen to the forwards again. I like to not think that everyone's happy and, you know, yeah. loving life. Yeah, right, okay. Um, I like to think that everyone's happy and loving life and no better gift than this dollar. So no better gift than this wonderful emotional energy I can give them. Okay. Now, reversals will also tell us how to fix a client's issue. Um, here's a classic example of what I call a trance instruction, where the reversal are telling us directly what to do. This is a client who had a metaphor of the devil in his first session. And the devil is literally his fear and anxiety about selling. He was the salesman. And we talk about how to fix this devil. And he says, well, maybe I should get some new pamphlets together. So here's the forwards. Uh, I guess there's just two things. I don't know how much information yet to put in the pamphlet and whether to have some information packed to send to them. There's two ways I could go. It depends what this looks like, whether that's sufficient or whether there's too much for that and backwards see the whirlwind to shift this devil out here we go it's a bit quick so listen carefully whirlwind is a very common reverse speech metaphor it's actually more than a metaphor it describes an energy field that surrounds a planet um, I will literally have this client see a whirlwind spinning around and around and taking, seeing, grabbing the devil and literally taking, taking the devil out. Okay. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that's how I will do it. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, here, here is another metaphor uh, that's a very common in reverse speech, the metaphor of love. And here's another trance instruction. So here's the forwards. I, I was just visualizing the world we're visualizing the wolf like we used to do because because we've done it before. Absolutely. And, and it just started bringing that power and that life force and that yourself something absolutely fantastic. You know, I just see yourself full with love gives me whirlwind. Here we go. See yourself full with love gives me whirlwind. See yourself full with love gives me whirlwind. So as you can see, a lot more to this than satanic messages in rock and roll is there. We are tapping into the depths of the unconscious mind. Okay, so the previous two reversals are examples of what I call trance instructions. They detail specific steps that the unconscious provides to work with an issue. Trance instructions normally come in metaphor or pictures, normally, not always. The one I played earlier about work with my grief, that's straightforward uh, everyday English, but generally they come in metaphors. Um, and that is how the unconscious at its deepest level works. It works with metaphors and archetypes. I have developed a whole map of the unconscious mind. So we call it the metaphoric map. I'm actually writing a book about it right now, actually. I, I teach it in my classes, uh, the structure. 
of the unconscious. And uh, um, um, for the first time, we have to put it into print. Okay, so I have developed an entire new hypnotic technique that I call metaphoric structuring. It has different trance instructions. It's working at a different level of the mind than, uh, than the normal hypnosis works at. It's working at the archetypal level of the mind. And <clears throat> it uses the client's own metaphors to both recognize and alter unconscious metaphoric structures. The technique goes like this. First of all, I do a 30-minute recording with the client to discuss the client's issue. That can, you know, that can be variety for relationship to emotional to business to, you know, well, gee, I've worked with so many different issues over the 35 years I've been working with clients. Um, so once I recur, uh, analyze the recording, I then once I record the um, record of the session, I then go away and analyze the recording in private and prepare a transcript. Uh, then I'll do a follow-up session with a client where I play them all their reversals um, and explain the pattern as revealed by the reversal. That session alone is very profound. Um, the client is literally hearing their own voice, uh, speaking to them in, uh, in, 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 in language they've never heard before. I then record a second 30-minute recording where I ask the client for solutions. How do we fix this problem? What do we do to change it? And I've already played you a couple of examples where the reversals would come back and tell us specific steps. I analyze that recording and prepare a transcript. I then write out two meta walks. Now, meta walks is a combination. I think I explained it here, do I? No, I don't. Okay. And we'll go back. Meta walk is a combination of two words, metaphor and walkabout. And it's a meta walk is therefore, uh, well, the walkabout is the Aboriginal spiritual journey through the outback. We know what a metaphor is. So a meta walk is a spiritual journey through the unconscious. Uh, they're short, short journeys, about 15 minutes each. Um, 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 they are a story. We will start off in a beach and cross sand dunes. We might fight fight dragons in the desert or go to Camelot. There's thousands and thousands of different scenarios that we can do. Um, so I uh, deliver the two meta walks in separate sessions a week apart. I then do a third recording to discover what changes have taken place. Then analyze recording privately. Then I do a follow-up session to play the client the reversals from the third recording and use the final med to walk um, using the reversals from the third recording. So that's the whole technique I take clients through. And uh, uh, I do it all over the phone. Um, you know, I've got no, I'm from Adelaide. I'm in Adelaide. I've got no local Adelaide clients at all, actually. Uh, so what is a med walk? is a pictorial journey through the unconscious mind using a person's own metaphors as a guide. It's a combination of two words, metaphor and walkabout. Thus, it is a spiritual pilgrimage through the deserts of unconsciousness. And I use the word deserts of unconscious very deliberately because reverse speech tells me that the desert is a metaphor for the unconscious mind. Okay, so here's an example of reversals found following the two meta walks I, I gave my clients. So here is here is the first one forwards. With the the feedback from the reversals that I've done, that it's, it's for me, it's not hard anymore. It's really lovely. And uh, backwards, spirit and the goddess will serve her. Spirit and the goddess will serve her. Spirit and the goddess will serve her. Yeah, Very nice positive message, sort of thing we want to hear after after a meta walk. Here's another one about healing the wolf. Here's the forwards. And they were interested in the theory, so I spent about a month or so preparing it for them so that they could understand it. And it was the MS Society of, of Southland, which is in uh, New Zealand. And uh, so I'm really happy with that. And backwards, healing that wolf. Healing that wolf. Healing that wolf. Healing that wolf. So, once again, the reversals tell me that we are having success 
and, they were... and healing this chap's wolf. All right, let's move along. Sometimes reversal can come from the collective unconscious and tap into universal knowledge. The first time I really discovered this was um, was um, in nine, in 2001, just before 911, the attack on the Twin Towers in the United States. And I heard this reversal on an Australian client. So here's the forward. That, uh, that I said that, you know, that um, I will be an open of souls and uh, um, had the most credible feeling of my, my heart uh, chakra just bursting wide open. And backwards, soon plan evil on America. 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 So I found this on a client, and he, he'd never been to America, had no business connections or any connection with America, and he was totally stunned by the reversal. But I kept it, and sure enough, three months later, um, the uh, plane threw, flew into the Twin Towers. So we were tapping into some knowledge that it would happen. And I found this reversal on me, oh, about oh, five years ago now, that really cemented the whole uh, future-telling potential that reverse speech has. I was doing a radio show, and we found this rather strange reversal on me. So, so uh, here's me speaking forwards. It's the most powerful way, because you can hear it in straightforward, everyday English. But, uh, uh, yeah, we are hard white to tell the truth. And backwards, on the highway, there's a chill here. On the highway, there's uh, a chill here. Oh, I've only got it twice. Sorry, had no idea what it, had no idea what it meant. Okay, what on earth does that mean? Anyway, two weeks later, I'm flying to see a mate of mate of mine in the United States, and uh, the plane gets to the airport, circles the airport, it can't land because it's snowed in, so it flies back to its destination to to where we're at left from, which is Portland. And I went and hired, hired a car, drive to see my mate. Anyway, half an hour into the drive, it starts snowing lightly, then it gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And before too long, I'm driving in a raging blizzard down to about five miles an hour. And I remember this reversal on the highways. There's the chill here. I go, oh my God. That was almost like a premonition for what it's happened. Nice so, all right. Reversals can also come from spirit. Uh, many reversals come from spirit as spirit is constantly talking to the unconscious mind, giving a guidance, advice, reassurance. Here's a client talking about money problems. Does it further for us to put more energy and money and effort? And that's all I've got. Does it further for that's all I've got on the forward, sorry. But backwards, he says, you're frightened, lean on me. You're right. Lean on me. You're right. Lean on me. You're right. Lean on me. And that's straight backwards. And that's his spirit talking to him and saying, look, I know you're frightened. I know you're upset. Just lean on me. Trust in me. Get wonderful messages like this in reverse speech all the time. It's such a wonderful, beautiful language. And... Uh, communicates just wonderful truth. It, it's just an amazing thing. Uh, it, uh, who's this on? Oh, this one is on me. I want you to listen to the emotions in this voice. Um, this is on me. I found it. Oh, um, uh, I lived in America for 10 years, uh, teaching and lecturing reverse, on reverse speech. I lectured to the CIA. You can... Uh, Google CIA reverse speech, and that will take you to the CIA page. I worked for the FBI on cases. I worked for Dallas Police. I was, uh, oh, gee whiz, did every talk show, every, every TV and radio. I even did Larry King Live, which is really, really quite a feat. Uh, it gave me quite a reputation in the United States, but got me a lot of lot of enemies as well. And uh, my house was burnt down in an arson house fire. I had death threats. and it was, Anyway, cut along long story short, I was basically chased out of America. And I, I came home to Australia in, in a really, re really um, emotionally destroyed uh, state. And not long after I got home, my son was murdered. 
and uh, which is another story altogether, which I won't get into in this lecture. Um, and I was in a really bad way emotionally. And so I'm talking to one of my analysts, um, trying to get this, trying to find out where this pain was coming from. And here I say, well, I'm very sensitive to energy. Maybe that's why. Could be. Yeah, could be. Well, see, I'm very sensitive to energy. You know, ultra sensitive. And backwards, listen to the emotion. My soul give the pain. Whoops. Here we go. My soul give the pain. My soul give the pain. My soul give the pain. So the pain that I was feeling was coming from the depth of my soul itself. Oh. So I had to heal my soul, which I did. I went into the session work with one of my therapists and worked it all out. Okay, here's an analyst reassuring well, like his get here's an analyst reassuring his client uh, about the session work. Here's the forward. Like to get reversals that are pretty clearly from your your unconscious mind, your subconscious. Soul serve you, make you feel love. Oops, sorry, lost it. Right, we'll try this again. Uh, well, likely. Here we go. Soul serve you, make you feel love. Soul serve you, make you feel love. Soul serve you, make you feel love. You know, the word soul is one of the most common words in reverse speech. Soul and wolf are probably the two most common words, uh, particularly in sexual work. Uh, verse week discusses the state of the soul uh, many, many times. Uh, here is, uh, in, in fact, reverse speech tells us that reverse speech itself is coming from that deep regions of consciousness. In this example, it actually tells us. Oh, oops, sorry, no, lost it. This example actually tells us what is speaking backwards. This is me on a radio show. Sometimes people ask me, does reverse speech endorse any particular religion? And the answer to that is no. There are no deities or religions that reverse speech endorses or says this is right or this is wrong. It, it just talks about the soul and the endlessness of life. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that in itself is, is very powerful. Indeed. And backwards it says, it's the voice. No, I lost it again. It's the voice in heaven. This is the voice in the heaven. This is the voice in the heaven. This is the voice in the heaven. And it comes from that deepest part of the mind. Verse speech says the kingdom of heaven resides within. Okay, so how can reverse speech assist the hypnotherapist? Well, it can assist the hypnotherapist in many ways. One, it reveals audible communication from the unconscious. It will give us precise reasons for current dysfunctional patterns, behavioural and personality. It will provide a feedback loop to monitor the therapeutic process and it offers a brand new hypnotic technique to work with the deep unconscious mind. And uh, I'll be covering that in my workshop. And this is reversal, the only reversal I've ever found that uses the word reverse speech in it. So I'll play you this. This is a wonderful reversal to finish off, I think. So here's the forwards. You know, Sylvain, about, you know, according to David, you're supposed to be one of the big guys in the reverse speech in the future, which would be great. And then the reversal said, found the Steve server. Um, and he thinks that Sylvain's going to be the one that helps me find my higher self. I, I really don't know. Okay. Reverse speech in life. This will serve. The reverse speech in life, that's all sir. The reverse speech in life, that's all sir. The reverse speech in life, that's all sir. Yeah, reverse speech in yeah. life, this will serve. And there you go, that's my presentation. But I'm at my computer. I have hundreds of thousands of reversals at my disposal. I will open you all up for questions. What's your thoughts on all of this? That was um, <clears throat> awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, David. Okay. For, um, for people listening, I met David at the conference in Australia and, and I was really lucky to spend a good eight hours one-on-one -on -one with him on the Monday listening to pretty much eight hours of reversals. And yeah. 
my voice and listening to David and us having conversations. And for me, it was like someone grabbed my brain, which was made of Lego and smashed it on the floor. And then I had to kind of put my brain back together with this concept, new concept of <laughs> reverse speech. And it was kind of exciting because I don't get blown away very often. So um, yeah, I decided to get David on and um, we'll do some questions. My, my plan is eventually um, in the new year, we'll get David to come over and do a couple of day workshop and you can get the, he's got the technology. You can even, you can just go on his website and buy it that actually does the reverse for you. So you can jump on and buy it and you can play, which I do most days now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can get the reverse bit software from our website. And uh, if you go to Amazon.com, you can get all my books. There's 18 of them so far about reverse speech. And I'm a bit of a science fiction writer too. So there's some of those books there. Yeah, yeah so if anyone has any questions now, you can. Um, what I might do is I'll stop the recording now, David. And um, sure. 